Jacob Terrio, 13. Avery Terrio, 15. Thaddeus Pellegrin, age 66. And these are my grandkids. So, Papa, if you could have been anything in your lifetime, anything besides a shrimper, what would it have been? What would it be? I I don't know. I'm I'm pretty content with with what I did with my life. You know, um, I think I'm one of the few individuals that lived life on his own terms. So uh, I'm I'm pretty content with what I did and what I was able to do. And and also, I think the biggest thing is that you find something to do that kind of contributes to society as a whole. Somebody better write that down because that's good. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite thing about like this area? My bridge and being able to go fishing with, <laughs> on my four wheeler, oh, and, and, and 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 taking my my, my grandkids with me, man, that's that, that's kind of neat. That's How many people can leave their house and in five minutes be fishing? Fifteen minutes have caught a couple of fish, <laughs> bring them back home, have clean a them up. Fish stories. And, and <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Is the shrimping still good down here? My understanding is is that probably it's the seafood that's coming out of Louisiana right now is the safest of any seafood to eat because it's being inspected at so many different stages, you know. But I think one of the big things for the processors right now is that people are not buying the shrimp because of fear that the shrimp are contaminated with oil. When it happened, did you like? Did you automatically think, "Wow, Louisiana is about to get slammed"? My gosh, you know, I mean. With that that amount of oil, you know, it changes everything. It has the ability to affect everything for God knows how long. So my hope is that we learn from it and that we develop a process that if we are going to continue to extract oil from the depths of the, of, of the Gulf, that we can do it in an environmentally friendly manner and a safe manner. Say, like... If another hurricane came through and we weren't as fortunate, say we had some serious damage to the house and everything like that, would you sit here and rebuild or would you move on? That's a, that's a tricky question. You know, um, I think that's a lot of the biggest fear of people who live in this area right now is that you know we all realize that we're one cat- Category 5 storm from oblivion, you know, so um, I don't know. Are there, uh, are there places... Like, could you go to where a place was and that's not there anymore? Oh, I mean, over here? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> we can, we're, we're in walking distance, I can assure you. Right. Like, but, like, how, how much does it affect? Is it, like, miles or, like? In my lifetime, which in the scheme of things is just a blink of an eye, I've seen where people were raising cattle, and those places are covered with four and five foot of water right now. So at this point in time... What upsets you the most? Like, is it coastal restoration, what we're not doing for coastal restoration, the BP disaster, anything? I think if you look at it in, in these terms, uh, I, I know that throughout the United States, um, certain communities are affected by economic events, a plant closed, uh, you got to move to go over here to, to, to make a living and stuff like that. But in the end, for, for most people they can always come back to their roots. This is where I was born. This is where I was raised. This is the place where I grew up as a child. Here in South Louisiana, it's a a bit different, a bit different. I I think the thing that bothers me the most is that there is a distinct possibility that we will cease to be. It's, It's scary, you know. That's not a very comforting thought. This area is who we are, you know. I mean, it defines us.